quite a lot of my projects are fairly small, so I don't keep a lot of longer lumber in my workshop. Pretty much everything that I use is right here on this lumber rack. Occasionally these shelves do get overloaded with scraps, so I have to try to clean it out in some way, either burn it or use it up to make a project. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take some of the scraps off of here and make a project. So I pulled out these scraps right here. These are actually end cuts from 2x4s that I cut for my house when I was doing the roof and they've been sitting on my lumber rack for months so time to get rid of them. The first thing I'll need to do is cut all of these 2x4 pieces into strips that are half inch by half inch. For this I'm not overly concerned if the strips are perfect just that they're very close to half inch square. Then I'm going to take the 2x6 and cut it down to a half inch thick. For the size of the box, the next thing I need to do is cut 10 of these 14 inches long and 10 more 13 inches long. For the ends of the box, I need 10 that are 8 inches long and 10 that are 7 inches long. I need to make the bottom from the two pieces that I cut from the 2x6. I'll cut one edge off straight, then I can glue both pieces together using my new clamps. With the glue dried on the panel, I can cut it down to size. It has to be 7.5 inches wide and 13.5 inches long. Now that I've got the bottom cut to size, I need to make a rabbit all the way around to reduce the thickness to 1 quarter inch. Now that I've got the bottom finished, I can start assembly, and that's pretty straightforward. But before I start assembling it, I have to do this. To give the wood an appropriate look, I'm pre-scorching the wood with this torch. I know, this is tearing a page right out of the 1970s souvenir making playbook, but it does give me the look I'm going for. Now that I have the first few pieces scorched, I can start putting it together. And that starts with the row on the bottom. I'm just going to glue those and tack them together with one inch pin nails. Then I can set the bottom panel in place and glue in the next row. Then it's just a matter of repeating that over and over again until it's done. Burn, glue, pin. Burn glue pin. I printed the sheet that has the dimensions on it for the ends of the lid. Now I'm marking out the shape on the piece of wood that was left over from the glue up I did earlier for the bottom. With half of the pattern laid out I can cut it out with the jigsaw then use that half to lay out the other half of the pattern and cut the rest of it out. Then some fine tuning on the spindle sander and I can use this one to lay out the other one. Next I can start cutting out the slats for the lid. Each of these is angled on one edge and the angle for each can be found on the dimension sheet as well. Now that the glue has had time to dry on the lid, I can torch that. And then I can scorch each individual strip and nail it on. When you get down to the last one here, you might have to do a little bit of playing around to get it to fit properly. Either sand it or plane it. But I'm not going for perfection here, so I'm not going to be too particular with it. As long as it looks right. And that looks pretty good. Normally I show all the detail of a project from beginning to end. But this one kind of got away from me a little bit and took on a mind of its own. So I kept adding things to it and I figured that the video will be way too long if I documented everything. So what I've done is I've taken lots of pictures of the other parts and they'll be on my website article that goes along with this build. Now well, here it is, the finished box. As you can see, I stained it a dark red mahogany color and along with the scorch marks it really gives it that rustic look. 
One of the features that I added are handles on the ends here. These are made out of wood. They're little ring poles. And these are on both ends of the chest or box, if you want to call it. The hinge on the back here is also all wood, and very simply made. It only has four screws holding it together, and it works really well. The box has the rustic appearance I was going for, and as you can see, I didn't add any metal. Everything here is all wood, except for the nails to hold it together and the occasional screw. Now to look inside, right now it's locked. I have a key. This is actually made out of wood as well. And that fits in this little hole right here. And I unlock the box and we look inside. I line the interior of the box with cedar. This is actually left over from me building my lawn chair. And I line the top as well. There is something special about the top and I'll show that in just a minute. So I wanted to uh, quickly show the lock. The details for these other parts, like the hinges and the lock itself and the handles on the end, will be on my website in the article that's linked in the description in this video. Let's show how this works. Fairly basic operation, but kind of neat. I got to confess that when I was building the box, I thought it was a little bit too plain, a little bit too simple. So I figured I would, you know, up the ante by adding this simple wooden lock to it. Originally, I was going to leave the interior of the box plain, but when I stained it, some of the stain leaked in through the slats and it kind of looked messy in there. So I added the cedar once again, using up scraps that I already had. While I was at it, I decided to line the lid too, but I didn't want to go to the trouble of doing anything that followed that curve on the top there. It would be just too much work. So I decided to make a panel that fit in here, but I thought that it would be neat to make this panel so that it would be removable to make this kind of a little secret hiding place. And there's a release mechanism that's hidden as well. You probably can't see it on the camera, but there's a very small hole here, just big enough for a small drill bit or paper clip to fit in to push the catch, and then the lid can be opened. And you take it out and get at whatever happens to be on the inside. The way the false liner on the lid works is there's two cleats that I glued inside here, and on one end of the cover, I've got a block here that has a rabbit in it that fits over this one. I've got the same type of block on this end, but it moves in and out like this with a wooden spring so that once you put it in, the spring will keep it closed like that and keep it locked tight. Let's put it in place, push it in, and that's it. It stays there. Well, I have to say that this project was fun to do, certainly a break from what I normally do in my workshop. And I got to use up some scraps that happened to be taking up space on my wood rack. Uh, you might have noticed that there are some other people making scrap wood projects today as well. A bunch of us got together and decided to do this thinking it would be a fun thing to do. I have a link to all the other participants in the description to this video, and I urge you to go and check out what they've done. I'm sure there are quite a few really good projects and ideas to inspire you to use up the scraps that are on your shelves in your workshop. As usual, thanks for watching and see you next time.